Well, I've got two questions for you. One, should we be trying to achieve maximum club head speed or should we be searching for the optimal club head speed? I'm gonna let you think about that for just a second, okay? And I want you to think about your answer. And now, here comes the second question. Would you rather go out on the golf course, play 18 holes, and when you get finished, talk about how far you can hit your seven iron or how far you can hit your driver? Or would you rather come in and talk about the 75 that you just shot? Now, I think I know the answer to the second question. The answer to the second question is, you would much rather talk about that 75 that you shot. If you answered, I would much rather talk about how far I hit my seven iron and how far I hit my driver, you may as well just leave this video and go find another one, okay? Because we are gonna talk today about optimal distance and optimal speed. Well, hello everybody, and thanks for coming into my video. Those are two very important questions, okay? And I, I asked them in that order for a reason, okay? Because I gotta think that what I see with my students this day and age, what I see on the internet, I gotta think that the majority of you are out there searching for maximum club head speed. You're all searching, how do I swing the ball, swing the club faster? How do I hit the ball farther, okay? Now, let me ask the two questions in the reverse order. What would you rather do after a round? Come in and talk about how far you hit your seven iron and your driver, or would you like to talk about the 75 you shot? See, I think your answer to that question is going to be the same, okay? Whether I asked it first or whether I asked it second. Everybody is gonna say, hey, I would much rather talk about the 75 that I shot. So now, let's do that first question second. What should you be doing? Should you be trying to achieve the maximum club head speed or should you be searching for the optimal speed that allows you to hit the ball solid and that allows you to control the golf ball? See how we ask those, I ask those questions in reverse order and see how important the speed and the optimal speed, the max speed and the optimal speed became, became in the order so let's talk about optimal speed. Well, folks, if you're wanting to get better at golf, okay, if you're wanting to improve your golf game and shoot those lower scores, you might want to consider subscribing to my channel because that's what I do out here on this channel. I try and give you the best advice for you to shoot lower scores. So what do I mean by optimal speed? Optimal speed is that speed that we can swing which allows us to hit the ball the most solid. It allows us to find the middle of the club face more often. It allows us to get our club face square. It allows us to find the ball first, then the ground more often. Therefore, when we're doing those things, it keeps our shot pattern, our dispersion pattern tight. And if we can keep our dispersion pattern tight, well then we can play better golf. We're going to hit more fairways, we're gonna hit more greens, okay? We hit more greens, we're gonna hopefully make more pars and give yourself chances at birdies. Therefore, shooting lower scores. So is optimal speed max speed? And I don't think it is, okay? Not with the average golfer. Yeah, you may get the tour player, those college kids, the people player. Hey, optimal speed, max speed, they could be very, very close. But us regular folk who have a job for a living, well, we can't go out there and swing at it as hard as we possibly can. We're not hitting enough range balls. We're not practicing enough. We're not playing enough golf. So we have to find that optimal speed, like I said, that allows us to hit the ball solid and then figure out how far that's making our golf ball go. And then when we get to the golf course, we find that yardage and we think about our optimal speed, okay? So let me show you how I like to find the optimal speed. So when you go out to the golf course and you're gonna play golf, get yourself a bucket of golf balls and go warm up. Now, what we need to be doing in that warm up is we need to be finding that optimal speed, 
okay? When I get to the golf course and I'm going to play, I'm going to, excuse me, let me put on the glove here. I'm going to start off my, my balls very slow. Usually start off with a sand wedge, hitting some little 20, 30 yard pitch shots because I, you know, I need to get loose. I need to find some rhythm. I need to find some, some tempo to my swing. I've already hit a few golf balls today, which is unusual for me in my videos. Normally the first shot in my video is the first shot of the day. But I've got a seven iron in my hand here, okay? And I'm gonna start off hitting these seven irons real slow. And what I'm trying to do, so I'm trying to find the club face, okay? I'm really working on trying to find my balance, okay? I want really good rhythm. Okay? Solid right there. And then as I continue to hit these seven irons, okay, I will gradually let my speed increase. There was a fat one. And folks, I'm not going to edit any of these shots. <laughs> I leave my bad ones in there. But I'm going to gradually let my speed increase and I'm increasing my speed with my pivot. And I'm just keep trying to find the ball solid. Now, since I've increased my speed, those last two shots weren't very solid. The first one was fat, that one was a little thin. So I'm gonna continue at that speed and see if I can start finding the ball solid. That's the best one I've hit yet. And so I may do that again, okay? Keep that same speed, keep that same rhythm. Another good solid one, lost my balance a little bit right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and go maybe a little bit faster, all right? Because I don't think the swings that I've been making are my maximum speed. That swing felt a little hard to me, felt a little forced, felt a little forced with my arms, okay? Again, I'm gonna try and keep that speed up a little bit on this one. Not very solid, little thin, little right. Finding it more difficult to find my balance at this speed, okay? But I'm gonna stay with it Keep working on it. Ugh, worst shot of the bunch. So I'm kind of finding out out here today that my optimal speed isn't real fast, okay? Let me try one more. More in the club face, but up and to the right, not my shot that I like to hit. So I'm going to make the conclusion that my optimal speed is going to be the one step back. So let me go back in here, hit a couple more golf balls at what my optimal speed is. Much better. Now, balance wasn't the greatest. Ball was a little bit thin, but the ball had a draw on it and the ball was straight at my target. Okay, very important right there. I'm gonna come back to that thought in just a minute, okay? One more time here at what I feel my optimal speed is. Again, not the most solid shot I've hit in my life, um, but it was right on line, okay? Last one. Then I'm gonna give you, go back to that thought that I just had. That was a good one there. Well, I don't know how many balls that was that I hit, but it was less than 20. And that's all it took for me to find what my optimal distance is for today. Remember what I just said right there, for today. 
because my optimal speed is going to change on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know you're sitting there thinking, well, how can that be? Well, we feel different from day to day. I don't show up to the golf course feeling the same every single day. Sometimes you get out of bed in the morning, hey, you got a little stiffness. Well, that may, it may be a day that you can't swing so hard. Other days you jump up and you feel like you're 22 again. And you're going, geez, I can go do anything I want to. So that optimal speed is going to change from day to day. And this is why before you have a round of golf, you should go hit some golf balls to find what speed you need to use on the first hole. Now, I think your optimal speed can change during the round as well. So let's say today I went over and teed off that first part of the segment. That was our big group, Sunday morning group over there. Let's say I was playing golf with them today. And I started off the round with that optimal speed that I found, which to me was felt like about 60%. You know, I don't ever like to go above 80%, but that felt about 60%. And I got into the round of golf and hey, by hole five or six, I've really loosened up. I've been hitting it really good and solid. I've made some pars, maybe I've thrown a birdie in there and I'm finding greens, I'm finding fairways and all of a sudden I'm feeling better. Hey, I may be able to let that speed increase just a little bit you know I would first test it with my driver I would let my driver increase just a little bit and if it felt okay I might then go to irons and why would I do driver driver is my it's kind of my better club okay I'm I've always been very good with the driver it may not be your driver it may be your eight iron but just kind of gradually let it increase now it can go the other way as well I could be in a round of golf, had my optimal speed, started off, didn't hit it real solid the first four, five, six holes. I've made some bogeys. I'm a little bit over par. I may need to back off. I may need to get that rhythm to come back down. Let me find that club face again. Let me find the rhythm of my swing again. Let me build a little confidence. Let me make a few pars. Then if I build some confidence, I hit the ball solid, it may gradually increase again. But I'm always going to be aware of that optimal speed. So let's go back, my last thought in this video, to what I said when I was hitting balls. I had sped up, never hit the ball very solid anymore, came back down. First shot was pretty good. Second shot, not quite so solid, but it went straight. And I said, that's a good thought. I'm going to come back to that. At our optimal speed, our bad shots aren't really that bad. At maximum speed, our bad shots can be catastrophic. At my optimum speed, if I've got a seven iron in my hand, I'm not hitting it 20 yards right of the green, 20 yards left of the green, hitting a big, huge fat one that comes up 30 yards short of the green. Everything's gonna be up there pretty tight. The worst I'm going to have is just a little chip shot from off the green somewhere if I'm playing smart. So see other benefit to optimal speed. So let me go back to my original questions and let's finish the video on the original questions and let's see if you answer them differently. Question number one, should we be out there trying to achieve maximum speed? with our driver, with our seven iron, with whatever club it is, which we then are achieving maximum distance, or should we search and find our optimal speed for the day that we are going to play golf? And then question number two, what would you rather do? Finish your round of golf, come in and talk to your buddies about how far you hit the tee shot on number four and how far you hit a seven iron on number 16, or do you want to come in having that 75 on your scorecard, sitting back, collecting money from everybody because you won the bets today, and then sitting there and talking about how smart you played and how great you played golf. Let me know in the comments below if you made it this far in the video, and if you did, thank you so much. But did the answer to that first question change from the beginning of the video to the end of the video? If it changed for the good, that means I'm doing my job here. 
And it also means you're being a really good student and you're listening, okay? Well, thank you all so much for coming in and watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Again, I'm here for you to help you play better golf. And playing better golf does not mean hitting it as far as we possibly can. Playing better golf means coming in at the end of the day with the lowest number on the scorecard. Well, listen, if you want to play better golf, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And like I said, drop me a comment below. Would love to hear from you. Thanks a lot, y'all. Have a great day.